Live right here on a football Friday, getting you set for Super Bowl 58 out in Las Vegas. Every single guest that we have had on this edition of a football Friday, well, I guess outside of JY, that's kind of ugly of me that I just did that. Well, every other Mm. guest on this football Friday edition of the early line will be out in Las Vegas with us next week inside the media center, inside Mandalay Bay on Super Bowl Radio Row. And that includes our guy, Mike Blewett, joining us here on this Football Friday on the early line. He's flying out to Vegas tomorrow night. We're excited to see each other next week in person. Blue, we appreciate your time here on this Football Friday. Fired up, obviously. We got a big week in front of us. but So a couple of more Football Fridays to go. Excited to be with you guys out there, obviously at the MGM Sportsbook Radio Row and, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll have some great interviews and obviously looking forward to a great game and probably an insane atmosphere around it. That's the thing I'm anticipating. Yeah. Nine days away now. The countdown into single digits till Super Bowl Sunday out in Las Vegas. It's the Niners and the Chiefs. Blue, we've seen a little bit of movement for this spread, but since the line opened up late on Sunday night following conference championship weekend, it has been under a field goal. That's really how things stand in Super Bowls as of late. We have not seen more than a five-point spread in nearly a decade and a half in Super Bowl history here in recent times. A a two-and-a-half point number now in favor of San Francisco. Francisco, the over under 47 and a half blew it do you expect Super Bowl 58 the game that we see in nine days to be as close and competitive as that line indicates I do expect a competitive game yes what I would be cautious of is obviously during this two-week period you can talk yourselves in and out of any single prop or line on the board and I think it's important to sort of quell the noise around you and just evaluate the game as best as you can obviously listen to people like us to make sure you don't get caught in some sort of 10 leg parlay in order to think that think that you have the super bowl nailed what concerns me right now just macro is that one team has played really lights out particularly on defense and the other team has not played their best brand of football. That is the 49ers. I know that the the Chiefs gave up some points in Buffalo, but they were able to contain them in the second half and in the fourth quarter when it mattered. The Chiefs' second half defense has been spectacular for almost the entire season, and I think that's going to really have a large influence on this game. The Niners knowing that they need to get out in front and play from in front like they've been unable to do so far this postseason. Mike, let's focus on the Chiefs here and the movement throughout the regular season and the preseason on them being Super Bowl favorites. Because quite frankly, the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl this year. Beginning of the season, nobody's shocked by this. But if we look at the odds, they were a quality football team over the first couple weeks of the season and hit that bump. But when you take a look at entering into the playoffs at a 10-1 to price, I'm surprised the Chiefs are in this spot because as Ben and I talked about so much during football season was I kept buying into the Chiefs late in the season by how easy their schedule was. I thought there was a path to the Super Bowl because not only were they going to be a good football team as they are, I thought they would be hosting once again the AFC championship being the number one seed. They weren't the number one seed. Are you as shocked as I am, Mike, that the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl at this point having to go on the road to Buffalo and Baltimore? I, shocked is a tough term to use here. I think the 10 to 1 entering the playoffs number that we just showed on the graphic seems spectacularly silly now. They still have the best player yeah. in the world on their team. Mm-hmm. We know a lot of the things that went wrong, but the defense was not going wrong really at any point during the season. Every team is going to get mm-hmm. got at some point. It's happened to the Niners against the Ravens. Oof, it happened to sad. the Chiefs against the Raiders. And I just think you have to oftentimes, Donnie, particularly with favorites, we talk about this a lot, whether it's one single game or an entire season, you have to understand that the odds are baking in the entire game or the entire season. So the Chiefs were favorites for a reason. There's peaks and valleys to it, but to say that I'm shocked that they beat the Ravens and the Bills, no. I I bet on them both times to cover. I did think the Ravens would beat them. I thought that was going to be a tight game, but I don't think the Bills had enough, and I still think that this coaching tandem of Andy Reid and Steve Spagnuolo, amazingly, 
is still underrated. Maybe it's because Spags didn't have a good head coaching stint, but he is lights out in the second half of every freaking game. Some people are just better as coordinators when they can focus on one side of the football. KC, second best scoring defense in the NFL throughout the regular season. Best second half scoring defense all year long around the National Football League. So this Kansas City team is different than the previous three we have seen appear in a Super Bowl. It might be defense first for San Francisco for most of the year looked at as a juggernaut around the National Football League. Blue, as we compare these two teams, the tail of the tape for the 49ers and the Chiefs, of these two clubs, what do you think is the best individual unit on either side? That's a really good question. When everybody is playing their best, I'll just say it like this. When everybody is playing their best, it is really hard down, to slow down the Niners offense. They just have so many weapons. They're so diverse. Now, I don't think we haven't seen their fastball except for 20 minutes against the Lions in the playoffs. But when every unit is playing their best, it's hard to knock the Shanahan offense with this level of weaponry off their best game. I, I think that that is what I would choose. But I have to pick the Chiefs offense a close second because Mahomes is there. It's not as diverse. They only have really Pacheco and Kelsey to rely on. But Rasheed Rice is no slouch. The guy's a rookie having an incredible season. So I think it's worth noting that I don't think they're a distant second, but I think if I'm picking the four units, it's them. And there may have been points during the season where we could have ranked the Chiefs offense or Chiefs defense, or it's rather the Niners defense is number one, but Niners defense giving up a lot on the ground. And mm -hmm. I, I would think the Chiefs defense stacks up even better than them right now. Take a look at the points to be scored in this game. The one thing we usually see is some line movement. We've had that on the side, but the total, FanDuel opened up here, Mike, 47 and a half. Where do we sit today on a Friday ahead of Super Bowl week next week? Still the same at 47 and a half. What are you oh, yeah. looking at from a points perspective in this game for Super Bowl 58? Solid number. Donnie, it's the type of number that mm -hmm. I think you and I probably could have picked, and they would they nailed it. I think they know that it's going to be hard for that number to move because we're looking at a score that should be right around there. You know, we're looking at a 24-21 type, you know, 26-23 type of score getting in that range. So I think it's a good number. I'm going to split it up, certainly, and look at second half unders. The Chiefs' fourth quarter unders this year, 19-1. and one. So I think you're looking yeah. and that at numbers like that as opposed to maybe the entire game. You see me on here splitting up the Niners numbers a lot too. So I think I'll do that instead of maybe worrying about the, sweating the whole game. Was it last year's Super Bowl or last year's playoffs or maybe two years ago now that Mike Blewett correctly predicted the final score of a significant Ooh. NFL game? Rams, Rams, Bengals, Super Bowl. I nailed it. 23 23-20. Twenty-three twenty. That was the final score. Folks. In twenty bucks. So take a shot. Is it too? Ooh. Listen, we got nine days. Is it too early to ask yeah. for a correct score prediction? <laughs> you want to wait yeah. until next week? Not give next away the week. secret sauce before. All right, fair enough. All right, I got five fair shows. So you're the radio. You're the radio and TV yeah. business. I can't tease it until I'm live in Vegas. Yep, that's a good for move. sure. No, I completely agree. Ben hasn't done and this. You should very much. tease it. Yeah. Yeah, no, not not many times. I get that. So, listen, Blue, if you're not going to give us a correct score prediction, give us your correct pick for who wins Super Bowl MVP. Mm. Super Bowl MVP uh, is a great one. If you're not putting a couple of bucks on Isaiah Pacheco, what are you mm. doing? We're here mm. all year helping you out. The guy touched the ball 28 times in the last game. If he breaks a few free, I know it's still a long shot. It's a long shot for a reason. Isaiah Pacheco, 35 to 1. Let's go. Do you hate Rutgers football? No? Bet Isaiah Pacheco. Mike flew it back for a second segment next. Nine days away from Super Bowl Sunday, Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. We have given you the overall approach from where the game odds stand right now for Super Bowl 58. San Francisco, a two and a half point favorite, minus 130 money line for the 49ers, plus 110 for the Chiefs as an underdog. The over under remains at 47 and a half. Let's dive even deeper. 
prop perspective, the individuals that will impact who hoist that Lombardi trophy nine days away in Las Vegas. Mike blew it back with us for a second consecutive segment. Blue, of course, we start with the quarterback comparison. I ask you a two-part question. We'll go step by step. We begin with Patrick Mahomes, who has the higher of the two passing yards props for Super Bowl 58, 262 and a half. First part of the question, can Kansas City win a Super Bowl if Patrick Mahomes stays under 262 and a half? Yeah, I think so. I, we just talked about Pacheco at 35 to one. Uh, obviously, it, it's not it's not out of the question at all. I, I think if Pacheco is touching the ball 28 times again, they scored 17 points last week and won the game. I don't think they can do that in this one, but yeah, I, I think Mahomes could come in at 250, have an efficient day. Look, look at his games thus far. What was he 17 of 23 against Buffalo? They didn't have to light it up. Pacheco's been really good for them. Even though Pacheco hasn't put up big numbers, he's getting a, a large amount of touches. So yes, I think that's possible. But I would right. note, that, and this may be lead to another question, I mean to step on it, but Kelsey's got his work cut out from for another week he aced the test last week but Greenlaw and yeah. Fred Warner are, might be at another level from uh from Queen and Roquan Smith we will get to Travis Kelsey in just a moment second part of my follow-up in that quarterback comparison board 245 and a half is the number for Brock Purdy what do the 49ers need out of Purdy on Super Bowl Sunday to win that Lombardi trophy I think that's also a yes, by the way, if you say, can they come under that number and still win the game? Christian McCaffrey is obviously a big factor for them. But if I'm making a correlation, I think it is uh, of more importance for Brock Purdy to have efficient and perhaps, perhaps prolific passing game in order to beat the Chiefs uh, than it is the other way around. Uh, maybe that's uh, the opposite thinking from some, but I, I do think that there is mm. – I think if Brock is out there and having a good first half and hitting Ayuk and Debo for big plays, I think that's the type of start that Niners need to get off to in order to make sure they're putting up enough points on the Chiefs in that first half. Yeah, I need to see some aggression right out of the bat there from Kyle Shanahan. Wasn't happy with his last Super Bowl performance against the Kansas City Chiefs. I thought they needed to be mm -hmm. more aggressive than they weren't. We'll see how that translates. But the one thing that we do know, Mike, is Christian McCaffrey has been the lead dog all season long for the San Francisco 49ers, and we don't expect anything less in Super Bowl 58. Two questions for you. Number one, the prop bets here, obviously, rushing yards at 90 and a half, receiving yards 34 and a half, and anytime touching at minus 220. But we're a week out from the Super Bowl. The last time we saw Christian McCaffrey landing on his head out of bounds and getting his neck worked on. Are you worried about McCaffrey at all heading into the Super Bowl, or is it just full go all the way through these numbers? I, you have to be somewhat concerned. He couldn't finish the game. He didn't finish the game. So... Uh, I think they're keeping it under wraps. I think we'd know more if it was significant. Like, for example, we know about the Joe Tooney being out. We knew about that before the AFC championship came. I think there would be more buzz about his inability to go or how much he's compromised before now. There'd be some story, I think, already. So it leads me to believe that they're working on it. Maybe he's not 100% right now, which players are at this point of the season. And I think it's a full go, but... If Eli Mitchell had to come in and take a few carries, I think we have to be prepared for that. 90 and a half is Christian McCaffrey's rushing yards prop. Yep. 34 and a half, his receiving yards number. You can see what is expected out of Christian McCaffrey, a combo prop that is north of 130 yards at this moment. He very well might be Super Bowl 58's most important individual player come a week from Sunday. On the other side, you already said at a 34 to 1 number, why not put a couple of bucks down on Isaiah Pacheco to win Super Bowl 58? for Super Bowl 58's MVP for Kansas City. 67 and a half is his rushing yards prop. 16 and a half attempts the carries number for Super Bowl 58 minus 140 for Pacheco to find Pater something he has done every single game this postseason for Kansas City. Blewett, how do you describe Pacheco's emerging role in this Chiefs offense? 
I think what we've seen from the Chiefs is a very heavy concentration of what their offense is. Yes, Marquez Valdez-Scantling had a couple of big plays, but they really have whittled it down to three options. The Chiefs, historically, particularly when Eric Bieniemy was there, I'm not saying that he was pulling the strings on the offense. It's clearly Andy Reid, but they did a really good job of spreading out the number of targets, right? Yes, it was Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, but they would mix in some touches to the backs and the tertiary receivers. So we still see the Justin Watson and MVS and those types of uh, touches happen, but we've seen this offense really concentrate on three guys, and that's Kelsey, Pacheco, and Rashi Rice, um, with with obvious exceptions. So his his role in the offense, his ability to help them run out the clock, everybody talks about his running style, which is so fun to see. It's even more fun to see that he was a late round draft pick from obviously we've got Big Ten Ben on here. So from a Big Ten school, I think it's just very cool the way that he's emerged and how he's become such a crucial part of the offense. I've always been sort of waiting for him to be an even bigger part of the passing offense, but it doesn't really happen that much. Four targets last week, though, uh, only for 14 yards. I think they look for some chunk plays with him. And if it doesn't work, they back to the drawing board. But again, 28 touches last week, 16 before that, 25 before that. So if this is the time of year where these teams are going to lean on their most valuable assets. Yeah, most of the time here throughout the NFL season, and quite frankly, for the past decade, it's really been a backfield by committee in most instances, and particularly in Kansas yeah. City. It's actually refreshing to go into a Super Bowl and say, no, 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 there's a lead dog here that's going to get the majority of the playing time, and obviously the same thing with the San Francisco 49ers. Mike, let's flip it over to the San Francisco 49ers wide out position, weapons across the board. Brandon Ayuk and also Debo Samuel. If it's going to be a reception prop, a yardage prop, a touchdown prop. Where are you going between Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel? Really good question, Donnie. I think Ayuk is important for them. But to be fair, I thought that last week as well. I thought Ayuk was going to be a much bigger part of their success offensively than he ended up being. Frankly, the the big play for him was a complete busted lucky break of 51 yards of his 68 yards were on a lucky bounce. He didn't really do anything outside of that. Uh, but we did see Debo do a lot. And the fact that Debo was able to put up, uh, I think it was eight for 89 last week, uh, yeah. I, I certainly quelled our fears about his health. And I think that you can more readily get Debo into the offense here than you can I. You, you are dealing with serious corners like Sneed that can cover on the outside. That is a weakness for the Lions. It is not for the Chiefs. So Debo across the middle of the field, I, I think that's going to be really interesting for him going up against Nick Bolton and other guys. But I, I, I'd, I'd lean towards Debo versus Ayuk, plus the number is lower here. Obviously, there was concern. There was a 50-50 status at one point last week getting ready for Conference Championship Sunday for Debo Samuel and his availability in the NFC title against Detroit. His receiving yards number was only 47 and a half. Brennan Ayuk, the highest for San Francisco, 80 and a hook. It was Samuel that ended up with 89 yards on eight grabs, leading receiver for San Francisco, most targets for the 49ers last week against the Lions as well. Blewett, you mentioned Travis Kelsey, who on the most significant stages for Kansas City throughout this dynastic run has always risen to the occasion. At least 71 receiving yards in all three playoff games this year, three touchdowns in the last two games to send Kansas City back to another Super Bowl. You said earlier in the show, he has passed all three tests so far this postseason. Will he make it a perfect four for four on Super Bowl Sunday against the 49ers? Man, this is the ultimate test. I would not want to be having to rely on a tight end against this team, but we've seen it time and time again. Even in games where they're getting blown out like they did against the Bucks in the Super Bowl, Kelsey still put up numbers. So I think they're going to force it. I think he's too big a part of what they're trying to do. They're going to have to be more creative because Dre Greenlaw and Fred Warner can cover. Uh I just think that he's too important to the team. I, I can't see us being in a position where Kelsey goes four for 37 and the Chiefs win the game. I think he's too important. 
So as we have Mike Fluid here on this Football Friday, we are just a few days away from being in Las Vegas inside the media center on Radio Row for Super Bowl 58, where some of us at the Bet MGM Sportsbook Blue and tell the Sports Grid audience where they mm. can see you next week out in Las Vegas. So obviously be with the guys on Radio Row during the week, various spots, but I'm going to be holding it down at the MGM Sportsbook. That show will be a variety of different guests and topics throughout the week, Adam. Kaplan, people that are with our network and not with our network, that will air 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern live every night live uh, on, on Sports Grid, and I'll be at the MGM Sportsbook floor like we were for the draft a couple of years ago in Vegas. Mike Blewett, live in primetime during Super Bowl week out in Las Vegas. Blue safe travels. We'll see you out in the desert.